innovation is necessary for the progress of our civilization. And invention is necessary in order to be able to uh, generate new kinds of innovation. The first is the improvement of an existing process. The second is uh, really starting a completely novel path where we can uh, look at the creativity that leads to the invention as the source of this uh, original creation, really. Uh, human intelligence, uh, human uh, creativity, arts and science are coming from the same root that we believe is genuinely and uniquely defines us. Now, we know that we have huge challenges ahead of us, so we want to increase our rate of innovation, which is the very definition of jolting. And as a consequence, we want to increase the rate of invention, and we want to increase creativity. There are many ways that we can um, stimulate creativity, and there are many different methodologies, there are many different uh, schools of thought. There are those who believe that there are uniquely creative individuals. Actually, there are a lot of people who label themselves non-creative. They admire artists, painters, uh, dancers, uh, any kind of uh, individual that, according to them, is endowed with this ability that they do not possess. I don't think they are right. All of us have the ability to be creative. Um, some of us have been stimulated uh, since we were a child to express this uh, creativity, to explore, to enjoy the unexpected, uh, to revel uh, in uh, the weird and quirky, uh, which often are labeled as mistakes, uh, inadmissible approaches, uh, unconventional and excessively unorthodox uh, solutions that um, the norm rejects. And those of us who, uh, contrary to that, have been always told never to leave uh, the well-trodden uh, path, uh, are then surprised when uh, their instinctive, innate ability uh, to experiment, and to find novel solutions is uh, kind of uh, stuck. Uh, they, they don't have those kinds of spontaneous mechanisms that uh, the creative people they admire can unlock uh, on, uh, on demand without any hesitation, uh, really applying it to uh, different kinds of um, applicable areas. And that is, I think, also uh, a, an important further step. Uh, even among the creative people, there are those who apply themselves to be creative in a given area. Uh, they are an actor, or they are a painter, or they are a writer, an author, or a dancer, or well, a scientist. And they feel that uh, they cannot or they should not try to express themselves in those other areas because they don't have the proper training or they don't have the talent. And I think uh, the ability or even just the attempt of applying uh, methods of creativity across several disciplines is extremely uh, rewarding, uh, both exhilarating as uh, a, the behavior uh, itself, as 
the play, uh, the playful attitude uh, that uh, we conserve uh, from childhood, but also um, potentially leading to the kinds of innovations that open novel schools, novel styles, uh, novel uh, paths and adventures, and on which uh, entire new generations can look back uh, with envy uh, and, and wonder how was it possible, how could uh, that given predecessor that they admire uh, come up with something so genuinely new. So the interdisciplinary approach in creativity uh, and as a consequence invention and as a consequence innovation is extremely fruitful. It's generative and uh, we can find methods and apply methods that can uh, further accelerate uh, and further spread out this kind of uh, approach and the ability that once again in my opinion is not the exclusive possession of certain chosen individuals but it is uh, something that belongs to every one of us and that we can and should cultivate. So, of course, the methods of how we cultivate this kind of creativity in a given discipline or in an interdisciplinary manner also evolve. When we are able to uh, resort to books rather than uh, referring to word of mouth uh, of our ancestors or when more recently we can um, check on an encyclopedia of creative methods uh, online. Uh, there are certainly numerous Wikipedia articles about creativity and how to become creative or YouTube videos and courses and series. And of course we can apply also modern techniques, such as techniques of artificial intelligence, in order to augment our creativity with tools that are ancient, like books, more recent, like YouTube courses, or from literally yesterday, like tools of artificial intelligence that are starting to display what we very reasonably should label as creative. OpenAI, the company that has brought us GPT-3, uh, the uh, program capable of generating paragraph after paragraph of text, having received as a prompt a sentence or two, has now released a new program called DALI, written D-A-L-L-E in assonance with the character of the Disney movie robot Wall-E, and DALI, uh, the uh, painter uh, that was indeed very creative uh, with his uh, exotic um, uh, approaches and uh, paintings. DALI, the AI program, starts from a text prompt and rather than generating a text output, it generates images. OpenAI published uh, this very recently and illustrated the description of the project with a, a series of examples. For example, the prompt of drawing an armchair or a sofa in the form of an avocado. How crazy is that? And if you think about it, you could come up 
uh, with uh, a few attempts, well, uh, the output is a couple dozen, and there could be many more, of sofas in the form of avocado. Ridiculous, um, impractical, or quite good. There are other uh, ways of combining the prompts. Cityscapes at uh, uh, sunset, or the cuisine and the plates of food items of uh, various nations, uh, or combinations of uh, silly uh, components like a penguin uh, walking a dog while wearing a tutu. And it is really weird to look at all those images that the AI generates because there is very little reason to resort to labeling them anything but creative. So how should we approach that? Is the conclusion that creative prof professions uh, are now endangered? Not at all. Creative professions are not endangered by this tool, they are accelerated joltingly by the availability of DALI. Just as architects uh, didn't uh, stop designing buildings because computer-aided design has become available and AutoCAD uh, became a reference tool of theirs, they just moved from designing buildings by hand to using the computer to be much more effective and proficient and uh, uh, the same is going to happen with the creative professions. Whether you are designing uh, uh, an advertising poster, whether you are designing a new kind of sofa, well, just the basic is not going to be enough. There will be so many steps to enhance it to incorporate it in a given context and a message and uh, to achieve what is the final applicable output that is really valuable economically. And so let's enjoy and let's thrive through the availability of this new era of jolting creativity. Uh, I am not uh, very fond of uh, celebrating um, any kind of uh, festivity, really, uh, or recurrence uh, of a particular astronomical uh, uh, meaning or arbitrary uh, closing or opening of a given period. Uh, but a lot of people are, and I like to um, support uh, their uh, attitude and, and, and their preferences. So, uh, a few days ago, it was New Year's uh, Eve and many people around the world celebrated New Year's Eve. So, my way of uh, celebrating is uh, very humble and very simple uh, with uh, my family and, and, and friends when I can. Uh, and I have a little ritual. A ritual that stimulates uh, the uh, ability that all of us have to be creative uh, and, in particular, synesthesia. Uh, our ability, uh, which is much more advanced in some people than, than others, uh, to cross-connect, interconnect our sensations. In this example, uh, the fact that numbers can arbitrarily, somewhat for sure, evoke uh, the sensation of colors. And so the exercise that at New Year's Eve I like to play, or if it happens a few days later, is to ask the person I'm with, what color is the number of the year? So an exercise for you in order to enhance your synesthetic abilities and your creativity. 
What color is the number 2021? 2021. Thank you and see you at the next episode of The Context. Thank you.